Hey guys, welcome to your Friday Senior Max Seller Week. I'm Dr. Mirdalis Diaz Ramirez, creator of the Max Seller Mastermind and the Design Your Physician Life podcast. And I'm laughing here because as I was starting to do this live, the app decided to reinstall itself. So that's why I'm like, like late one, one minute. Um, first of all, we want to say congratulations to our team. Um, especially to one member who just had a baby. So Kate Shandia, thank you for being a wonderful member of our team and welcome to the world, little Kit, right there in the Philippines. We love you and we look forward to seeing you. There's Kate. Hey, how are you? Uh, we have to show the baby soon <laughs> to the world. So welcome to little Kit. Then I want to tell you guys that I'm excited because this month, we start our next cohort for our new mastermind and uh, it's been great it's filling up we are excited about our new physicians we're gonna be sharing with us the next six months and you can still we still have some spaces so if you're interested in joining our mastermind please go up to mastermind.com uh, m-a-x-a-l-l-u-r-e and you can sign up also um, if you want to you know it share this uh, with other people do hashtag live and hashtag replay so that they can also come and and learn about what we have today for you what do we have today for you we're going to be talking about three specific ways in which you can steer your career in medicine and before we talk about that i really want to take you through some other exercise because it's not only about what we can achieve it's why we achieve it and the things that keep us from doing that so we're going to be talking before we talk about those three specific ways in which you can uh, steer your career in medicine. We're going to be talking about three limiting beliefs that are specific for physicians that keep us from achieving the things that we want to achieve. So let's start with those. And um, once again, it's like every time I see you, Kate, congratulations on your baby. I'm very excited for your, for your new baby. So the first limiting belief that can keep physicians from steering their career, which is a very common thing that we see, is uh, not having the preparation of the knowledge. They say, oh, I, don't, I cannot do that because I don't, have, I don't know how to do these things. So there's that, what we call the imposter syndrome. We are physicians. Um, we are no different than other humans, you know, we're, we're still humans uh, in our uh, pathways in our journeys we've had to deal with a certain level of excellence that's required from us so that we pass through certain educational funnels right in doing so we have acquired certain skills that many people don't have in doing so we have acquired a lot of knowledge that many people don't have and to be able to have the chance and acquiring that knowledge and practicing to that for that knowledge we have a lot of things that we have learned along the way that will certainly help us be great entrepreneurs. It can be, you know, in many different areas. So this thing with us saying that we don't have the preparation or knowledge is really a limiting belief that we put on ourselves. This medicine, for example, we didn't learn, we didn't, we were not born knowing medicine. So you're not born knowing all the things that you need to be, uh, to, to be, a, to know, to be a great entrepreneur. So those things can all be learned. So this first thing about the importance in the mind, I don't have the preparation or the knowledge, those are things that can be acquired and they can be acquired in different ways. You know, we have a podcast that you can see, it's called Design Your Physician Life. We have tons of material there. We also just released uh, something that I want you to see, which is the Physician Empowerment um, Countdown Series that we have on LinkedIn. So go this week, go through our LinkedIn. Uh, you look for Dr. Mirdalis Diaz Ramirez and then you're gonna find there uh, a series of a countdown that will help you to empower you to achieve this change. So we have to uh, survive, we have to surpass these limiting beliefs. A second limiting belief that we hear a lot is I don't have the time. The newest word for that is I don't have the bandwidth. And saying that you don't have the bandwidth to take charge of your life is really something that's going to cost you, it's costing you now, it's costing you later. In terms of not having the time, I'm going to give you one example of one of our uh, members who just finished. Uh, this is a physician and I'm, I'm telling this to, to the world because this physician was really, if you talk about somebody who's busy, this was a physician who has a practice, a full practice, a 10 year old practice in uh, one of the towns here in Florida, a full uh, medical spa. They decided, they have a family, we know with, with kids and everything. They decided to 
put that on the side, go to a fellowship, study for written and oral boards, and on top of all having all these pressures and all these things, they also decided to take part in the mastermind. Why? Because they wanted to change their life. There's this saying, and we saw it, if you saw it on, so, on our social media this week, we published something about Jim Ron. If you don't know who Jim Ron is, Jim Ron was the one who was the mentor for, the first mentor, the big mentor for Tony Robbins. A lot of the teachings that we have uh, through Tony Robbins this day, these days came a lot from Jim Ron. And that's one of the books that we recommend. It's an audio book. It's uh, The Ultimate Guide uh, to Jim Ron. You, we highly recommend that you go and read that because it works a lot in these limiting beliefs. It's, they call it the philosophy, right? Mindset. Instead of mindset, the, you, the previous word was philosophy. And in changing our philosophy, we're able to take control of our lives. And one of the things that Jim Rohn said goes along the lines of, if you don't have time to plan your life and to take care of your life, somebody else will. And guess what? They don't have good plans for you. And we've seen that in medicine. We've seen that in the way that healthcare is you know, developed. For one reason or another, we knew that we had to focus ourselves in medicine. And in doing so, we've given away to others the things that are now coming to haunt us, coming that to create so much in, uh, lack of satisfaction and amazing for us. So if we don't take the time, somebody else will do that. So saying that we don't have the time is like costing us our lives. Um, like this physician that we had in the mastermind, you can do this too. We have physicians who have, um, I have a physician who had, was driving four hours in a day two to go to work, two to come from work. After that, they had at home another hour or two of documentation. So that's five to six hours a day. They had six children at home. And still they found time to come to the mastermind on a regular basis. And guess what? By the end of the mastermind, they were able to have six hours back to themselves because they were able to take care of their lives. These are things that you can do if you have a support group and accountability group. And that's what we did for, for this particular doctor. And they were so successful in doing this. And not only that, they didn't only um, acquire those hours. Then they were investing in things that, they were, uh, that were of interest to them. Yes, they didn't have the preparation. They didn't have the knowledge. Maybe they felt that they, they you know, what can I do with a mastermind if I'm not an entrepreneur? Well, that's what we're there for. And guess what? You have six children that we know that you're gonna teach them the things that you're learning with us. So what you learn in a mastermind, you're gonna surpass, you're gonna to pass to others. You're gonna pass it to your patients because you're gonna be happier taking care of your patients. You're gonna be happier taking care of your family and friends. You're gonna have more time for them. And those are the things. And when you say you don't have the time you're cut to take care of your life, to steer your career, when you know that you're unhappy, when you know that you have lost your passion and your joy, then you're allowing others to take care of that for you. And it's not in their priority. Your priority should be your life. And that's what saying that you don't have the time really doesn't count. It's something that we have to work on. It's our mass, you know, our, our way of living. Uh, when we're physicians, you know, everybody in this group, we are all physicians who have responsibilities, call responsibilities. We know, you know, surgeons who have to be uh, with surgeries in the middle of the night and they still make the time to come. Uh, they have families, we have events, activities that we want to do, we have things for exercise, and then you still take the time to do this for taking care of yourself, especially if you're living in a situation where you don't think it's safe for you or your patients or the ones who are surrounding you in terms of your employees. Then the third limiting belief is that I won't be good at it, right? Like we want to be perfect because we've spent so much time studying medicine. And not only so much time studying medicine, like if something happens to our patients under our guard, it's something bad can happen. So for us to create something that's new, that's not, you know, I've been told stay on your lane, it can be, it can be something very significant. And having somebody telling us that from outside, when we know we have a passion that we've discovered for something, when we know that we can acquire the knowledge, when we know that we can take the time to take care of our lives, you know, Forget about that. Like we can do things in these other entrepreneurial ways where we want to give and still provide good quality, but that that perfection can be substituted with that grit, 
with that uh, desire and the purpose and the time to learn all these things and they can go on the way as we go we don't have for many of these things um, to to be as perfect as we are as physicians i'm an anesthesiologist by training after that interventional pain physician for over you know 16 17 years and i always have plan a b c d so nobody's gonna have a problem under my watch right and uh, to develop that confidence it requires a lot of knowledge and experience and we can do that as entrepreneurs but the same way that you build your body your your life as a as an um, physician you can live you can build a life as an entrepreneur in different areas so before i forget you guys that who just join us go and look at linkedin look at my page uh from this week in linkedin and i have put a countdown that is a physician empowerment countdown series that i did this week that you can check out and you can start changing your life today the other thing that you can do is that you can do to our website maxalur.com we have some things there for you we have first a thriving physician checklist that you can print or put in your computer and start changing uh, your things right away and the other thing that we have is our book we have a book that we have for those who own clinics and the book is basically meant to inspire to spark inspiration so it's called 45 questions to inspire growth in the medical clinic and if you have a clinic if you work at a clinic you don't have to own it hopefully one of those questions that we have there will inspire uh, you to go and, and build things with your team with with the way that you communicate with your patients with things to make the clinic grow and we have a lot of things there from marketing all the way to contribution to the community so I encourage you that you go to our website and take a look it's like on the tab that says book you can get your free copy of your book for those questions it's not meant to be this wonderful prose I know I'm not gonna win a Pulitzer for that book but what I want to do is create spark um, interest and, and growth in your clinics so you have all these resources that you can start using the podcast we have also put our podcast in uh, a website in a youtube channel so it's called max solar mastermind the youtube channel and it doesn't only have our podcast it has all these experiences from the podcast and it has also these recordings that we do on fridays so i want to tell you guys about three specific ways where you can steer your career in medicine and one of them is something you know in medicine itself right so as physicians we can steer our careers in medicine these days we have that example of that physician who was able to um, uh, go back to training and with just one year of training and then the appropriate uh, uh, coaching and support and accountability for her entrepreneurship they're going back to making in just six months more than what they made in any year of the previous 10 years in terms of finances. So you can steer your career, you can re-prepare yourself. We have physicians and I never really understood this in the past who come from other countries to the United States and they redo their whole training again because they are so passionate about this. And you can do this these days. We have, for example, I have uh, you know, relearned certain uh, medicine and now I'm a functional medicine physician. So I have done that within medicine. And we can use our medical um, skills to do that, like functional medicine, lifestyle medicine, if it's cosmetics and things like that, that will bring us joy. And it doesn't have to be some of those services, like you can go back and relearn some other, um, even skills within your own specialty. We were talking the other day to this particular ENT and they had, um, focus themselves in doing this particular type of procedures and they were doing this and the same thing for years and years and years and one of the things that we talked about is like you know you can go back and then maybe expand the amount of procedures you're doing or just steer the way that you're doing procedures in interventional pain management has been very exciting because right now it's a huge transition from that I compare to cardiology. So you had the cardiologists who were just in the in the uh, you know in the exam room with the patients, everything office based, and then now you had the uh, the cardiothoracic surgeons, and in the middle now we have the interventional cardiologists, right? So now in interventional pain medicine we had the pain physicians who were more in the office doing just office stuff, and then we had the spine surgeons, and now we have interventional pain management 
doing a lot of the minimally invasive procedures. By doing those things from a scientific point of view, from a medical clinical point of view, it's really inspiring. And as a physician, you find joy in those things. And then you have to be able to plan how you're going to integrate those into the office. So I'm going to give you a tip uh, for you because as physicians, we want to learn all this science many times. And then we come and we want to offer this, the same things like we, we, we learn a machine or something, we want to buy the machine. So one of the things that you can do to leverage and steer, uh, to steer your career in medicine within your specialty in the medical office is if you learn a new technique, make sure that you have a list of patients you know, if you are a practice that's established, at least of patients who are going to be using that so that your financial investment on that machine or that practice is already paid for. And by, by the time that you come back, then you're able to use that. And going back in time when I didn't understand that, I would see certain companies that they would not necessarily train a lot of physicians in certain techniques because they wanted them to have a certain number of patients. And it's true, like when you are having a business and you want to run a business, you want to do it from, you know, have that return on investment. It's not necessarily something that we understand when we are running practices that are just, you know, with insurance based practices. But still, these days that things are becoming more challenging, those are things that physicians need to be looking at, especially physician owners of practices, and be looking at more closely to be able to to practice so that's one way of steering your career steering it within you know medicine within your specialty the other thing that you can do is uh let's think about the second way of doing it, is that outside of medicine we have some people that say you know what i'm just tired and i just had an interview with somebody who told me i'm just tired of medicine i want to be seen as an entrepreneur but what does that mean you know first we have to identify your passion the things that you want um, to do and where your principles lie and where do you want to invest your time because yes we it's not that we don't have the time but our time is limited too and we want to be able to spend that specific time learning something that's going to be profitable you know if, if we want to change from medicine and do something out of medicine we are into building businesses not building a uh, hobbies because a hobby you cannot discount from taxes right and they come after you if you're not making uh, expenses after a certain, I don't remember the number of years, but if you keep saying to the, hey, I have this business to the IRS and you're not making money for six years, you, you don't have a business, you have a hobby. So we're making businesses here. So doing something outside of medicine has to be aligned with your passion. And one of the things that we see is that we have physicians who find this particular business, you know, there's sometimes like a multi-level marketing or something like that. And it doesn't go along with their passion, so that's not going to be long-lasting. For you to find something out of outside of medicine, yes, it's possible. Stories, we have tons of them. We have tons of people who have found solutions in building services, building uh, products outside of medicine, and they've been successful because they've taken their passion, gotten the knowledge, taken the time, have the support and accountability, and now they have a functional business. We have my partners here, for example, we have a wellness center. So we have steered our career within medicine for this wellness center where we have uh, physicians who have uh, gone ahead and studied uh, lifestyle medicine. I have studied functional medicine and we have this wellness center. So that's the way that we've steered in medicine. But they also have um, investments in real estate, like successful investments in real estate. So that's the way that you can do that. Outside of medicine, like that's completely completely outside of medicine, something you can do, you can reinvent yourself. Many people do it in a way where they say, you know what, I'm tired, I'm done, and I'm gone, and they just start learning something. Many others will say, you know what, I'm tired, I'm done, but I need to like wean myself off my work, and then start learning something, and then once they're at a level where they're already covering expenses, then they leave that uh, medical work and they transition into that other uh, place. In our case, in our purpose for the Max Seller Mastermind, when I created this, I really truly, uh, I created it because of the need and preoccupation of having physicians taking care of us. We want good physicians to take care of us. So we don't want physicians to leave medicine if they have, especially you reach a certain point in your career where you know so much, it comes so natural when it comes like a routine for you as a doctor, then you know so much. 
that you're super valuable to our communities and to our patients. And that's something that we, we should cherish. And because we reached that point in life, you know, we, we took a seat the way I see it, like we took a seat at medical school, right? That somebody else could have taken. And then we go through this thing with being overwhelmed and, and the moral injury. Right now we don't have time for that, but, but leaving those things aside, the truth is that you're a very valuable member of our community once you're a seasoned physician. Because with that experience, you have seen a lot. And regardless of what's going to happen with artificial intelligence, we think or not what's going to happen with that. Right now, at this moment in history, you are. So what we want to do is we want to keep physicians in their careers for as long as possible, practicing for joy and not for need. However, way number one of seeing your career, you can do that within medicine. Way number two, you can do it completely outside of medicine. So let's think about maybe a combination of doing this within medicine, right? And as physicians, we can leverage our degrees for, for things that are related to medicine that can give us some um, outlets, right? Created outlets, outlets where we think that we're contributing. If we talk about, you know, when you're burnt out or you're moral injured or all these things have to do with happiness. And then with happiness, we have certain components that have been scientifically determined that are the components of happiness. One of them is, you know, realizing that you have all and everything, you know, in the many things that you do on a regular basis, having that connection with others, having uh, people that you have relate to, and then having this sense of contribution, right? And creativity. So it turns out that we are, for example, in an era of artificial intelligence. And why do I bring this? Because it's going to be really a great shift in our lives for everybody it's going to be. But as physicians, if we want to steer our careers right now, we have that opportunity where we can use our knowledge, our experience of the whole system to be able to contribute. And we can contribute from the moment that things are being thought of, you know, like through ideas, we can do that for ourselves creating businesses that um, uh, deal with artificial intelligence somehow. And we, if you listen to our podcast, we have some physicians who have done that. We have like Dr. James Mean, who is using artificial intelligence. His goal is like not to have heart attacks, to live in a world without heart attacks. So he's using artificial intelligence to read hearts in a way that goes even better than what a cardiac uh, a coronary CT uh, calcium scan can do, right? Um, we have this other doctor, she was just in our Dr. Rachel Darellos, who has a company where she's helping physicians with their workflow. Uh, so it's not directly to the patients themselves, it's to the workflow. In her case, to the physician's workflow, in her case, she has an app where they install this for the office, the physicians, the, the patients enter their information. And by the time that patient gets to the physician, the physician has like and know that's tailored to that encounter. So that is helping the physicians in that way. So as a physician, you can have the idea and create that company itself. You could also contribute to companies like this because it turns out that not everybody who's creating this type of apps or services in healthcare is a doctor. These are people who came with an idea and they decided, you know what? I think in my experience, I went to the doctor's office and this is what I saw and this is what I would like to see or I think that we should have a way of measuring this or seeing this whatever way it is that they're talking about for their app or their, um, or their service, their product, but they're not physicians. They just came up with that idea. So many of those companies are looking for physicians to come there and help them. The products that we're getting through AI, the results that we're getting uh, through AI are dependent on the data that we're putting in. And the quality of the data is something that as physicians, we know what can be important. There was an example of this particular radiology um, a company. They were getting awesome, beautiful results that were better than what the physicians were getting. However, those results were based on something that from the data that they were getting that was based on nothing that had to do with the exact uh, body part it had to do with something that they had in the process and i go like this because there was like a marker that they were putting in their images and everything revolved around that marker so this was not reproducible for other companies you know or for other um for other ways of of measuring that uh, that radiological scan 
So we know what it takes to see a patient, for the process. We know, for example, if somebody invents something that the insurance will never approve or something that's even more simpler to do in real life than with one app or something that is running disturbed the way that we see the patients that's gonna make more work. We know those things, right? Because that's what we do all day long. So going to a company, you can steer your career still as a collaboration with some of these um, uh, creators in the world of technology to help them. Another way that you can uh, help and steer your degree, steer your career in medicine in this world of AI is through helping with regulation and going and training yourself. If you're somebody who likes to be in the political realm, um, somebody who likes to communicate, somebody who likes to see change at a higher level, somebody who's concerned about what these types of technologies are gonna do for our world, then you could be somebody who really gets inspired and gets that route of regulation, right? Legislation and help this world with that because it's really needed. And then another way, this is like a last tip I'm gonna give you, you know, we've given you three ways where you can steer your career. One, something in medicine, something else like complete outside of medicine and something like collaborating in medicine and from there going into this AI world is, um, I just lost my train of thought, guys. The last thing that I wanted you to try to do um, in AI is, oh, is education. What I'm trying to do for you, right? Educating people about the different tools. So once these tools are created, not everybody will learn how to do them. Not everybody will know exactly how to do them from the, from the get-go. But there's a group of us who are really interested in technology and who can help others to optimize their use, to optimize the way that their clinics run, for example, the way that they take care of patients. So these have been some ways that you can steer your career in medicine. I hope that you've learned some. If you're just joining us and you're here, please do hashtag replay and hashtag live so that others can take care of, take advantage of this opportunity. We have just reviewed three limiting beliefs that can keep you from steering your career. One is that, you know, that um, imposter syndrome that you don't have the preparation. Number two, that you don't have the time. And if you don't have the time, you're letting somebody else take advantage of it and plan it for you. Um, and that hasn't worked <laughs> that well. That's why we're all talking here. The other one is you won't be good enough, uh, you know, because we're perfectionists. And then the three ways that you can steer and you can go and replay this later is like looking for something in medicine, looking for something completely outside of medicine and doing a combination of it. So that's it guys. Remember we have, we're right now signing up for our mastermind. It starts this, um, this month. It's a minimum of 40 CME credits. So that means that you can use your CME allowance for the Max Seller Mastermind. And you can also uh, have it as a business expense in the case that it's a business expense for you. If you have a couple with you who wants to grow with you, who's, uh, you know, tired of seeing you whining and complaining every day about what's happening at the office, what's happening in medicine, have them come with you to the mastermind and no extra cost. And you're with us. The main thing, if somebody asks me what has been the main takeaway from the from the Max Seller Mastermind for me, for my life, has been that sense of accountability. So we have the coaching where we tailor that for each of our participants, that that's a given. We have also the support for each other, not as a support group in the way that we're there to complain, we're there to really advance our uh, our steering that we're doing in our careers and um, but it has been the accountability so the accountability the fact that every week we meet and we talk about our projects and we make them happen that's what's been a big game changer for me and that's one thing that I want you to understand that just six months we have like I think over 80 90 percent of our members can achieve significant change in their lives where they feel happier even in less than two months that's 80 over 80 percent of them and 100 percent of them say that they wish they would have done that earlier so that's what it's done for me that's why i keep coming and um, we have the group open you can reach us to maxcelerate.com and then book a call a discovery call with me it's me who talks to you and um, we are looking forward to have you come so you have a great day have a wonderful week it's a long weekend I hope that you enjoy it with your family and friends and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to visit our webpage, maxsolver.com, M-A-X-A-L-L-U-R-E and our podcast, Design Your Physician Life. I'll see you next week.